squares. Now that's a really fascinating topic. Uh, let's dive in. A square is basically a way of measuring a 90 degree angle. It's kind of a protractor that's stuck. As long as they are truly square, they are incredibly useful. Now, how accurate your square actually is depends on how anal you are. It is one of those things of how far is it off over how much of a distance. The bigger your square is, the more accurate it has to be. The littler the square is, its angle can be off a little bit and really not make that big a difference. On an average day in my shop, I use these tri-squares all the time. Every now and then, I'll bring in this big beefy thing. This one is a layout square. Yes, it's not a tri-square because you can't go on the inside. A tri-square gets its name because you can go on the inside and you can try the board. And that's where its name came from. But a layout square is just for the outside diameter. This is something you use when you're laying out your wood and figuring out which pieces will come out of what. A big square gives you a rough edge. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. You're going to lay it on there and you're going to use chalk to draw out your line and roughly cut it where it should be. It's just for the layout. When you get big pieces you need to do. It's a square you don't mind dropping and it being off a little bit, and that's why a lot of them are made out of wood. But you could go get a carpenter's square and do the same thing. These tri-squares right here are my day-to-day -day set. I use these things almost every day. Now, this big one, I really don't use that much. I only use it if I need to mark across the board that's 12 inches or more, so this one just doesn't come out that often. This one I use maybe once a week, maybe once every other week. It's not as common, but every now and then I'm working with boards up to 8 inches. These two, on the other hand, I use these things all the time, every day, constantly. These almost always live on my bench because these are my go-to squares. The vast majority of the wood I work with is less than four inches wide, and that way I can use a four-inch tri-square and I can mark across my boards. And this just, it's smaller, it's easier to handle, and it doesn't get in the way. I can put it in a pocket, I can set it out, and it's really not going to be a problem. I can also use this to try the edge of the board. It is a very useful and great size to have, about four inches. This one, though, I use this just constantly when I'm doing my joinery. Having something small like this with a two-inch beam is phenomenal for getting inside of dovetails. It's crucial that the shoulders on your dovetails and other joints be exactly 90 degrees, and having something small like this you can get in here without it being a problem. These are great, and so I usually say, you know, go get a couple small machinist squares. These are, I just use them all the time. The last square that I use all the time is the unsquare. Uh, this one is actually called a miter square. It is 45 degrees in and out. This is just phenomenal when you just need to create those lines. I have a couple videos on making these. They're relatively simple. It's just, it may seem a bit confusing, but they are very, very useful putting 45 in either direction. And then the ends of these are also 45, so you can fit them into things to find out what the inside corner is. I use this quite regularly. If I'm ever doing 45s, um, this is the one I grab. So these do 90 degrees or 45 degrees, but if I need to do something that's not 90 or 45, well, that's why they make bevel gauges. And these, you can put at whatever angle you want. Sometimes I want one at 45 degrees, and so I'll put it on here, set it up against that, lock it down, and now I have a, a second miter square. Hey, that's kind of nice. But if I need to do anything else, um, I have one of these simple protractors, and I love this metal version, and I can lock it down on a particular angle, find out exactly what it needs to be, and then I can bring it over here and set my bevel gauge to exactly that angle, and now I have a square set up to exactly whatever that angle was. It's around this point that someone is currently yelling at the screen saying, James, 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 what about that, that, that combination square? To which I say, oh yeah, I really need to talk about those, don't I? Okay, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a moment. I hate these things. I despise these things. They are the scum of the earth and the worthless, worthless thing to me. I just, I, 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 I hate them. They have caused me so many problems and have just ruined several projects that I, I don't allow these in my shop. I have, I've given away one Starrett and thrown away another one. And the only reason this one here with a plastic piece on there is a prop so I can do that with it. And I don't care. Now, all that being said, I just triggered a bunch of people I know, and one of those is Rex Kruger, a good friend of mine, and he loves these things, and I think he's absolutely bonkers. Uh, I've just had so many problems with them that I, I can't trust them, because everything goes on those two spaces that move around and are constantly getting sanded as you move it back and forth on the beam. Uh, they just aren't 
trustworthy. I've bought two Starrett's. I bought one brand new and both of them um, were out of square within a week and then they kept getting out of square. Yes, you can adjust them and you can file out those little pads, but then it's a pain. These things, I adjust them once and they're there. I've had several of these for eight years and I check them regularly and they're still square every time. There, there's no movement on them. There's no way they wear out. As long as you don't drop them and throw them, these stay in square. These go out of square just from simple function. And that's why I can't trust them because I, I, I have had several projects that I've gotten really close to and wonder what's wrong here and then I try it with another square and realize that this has been off. So that's why I generally say, yes, these are great because you can do multiple things. Hey, look at this. I've got a beam of any size I want. I've got a miter square on here. I've got a level. I've got so many things they're great for. But if you can't trust the tool, is it really worth having on your bench? And so that's why I, I don't use these. Okay, I'm going to calm down, back up, breathe, James. It's okay. That's why I use tri squares, machinist squares. I, I use them all the time and I love them and they are phenomenal. Now I have to say a huge caveat to that. If I were in a larger shop where I'm regularly walking around, I'm going from power tool to power tool, having one of these in my apron would be incredibly useful because then it's just one tool I'd have to carry with me. If I had to walk around my shop and I had to carry two or three of these to do the same job, then in that case, having a little bit more checking now and then might be worth it. But for me in my shop, all of my tools are within arm's reach. So it's like having an apron where all of my tools are there and I can reach them all at any given time. So having multiple squares is really useful for me because I can get one that does that job really well and it's not gonna cost me any space because they're all right here. I can reach them all. So why do I need one that can do it all but causes me frustration when I can have four or five that really do that job Beautifully. I do have two other square-ish things that I use from time to time. I've got a whole bunch of these one, two, three blocks. And I love these because you can lock them together and you can put them together and make other little puzzles or just simple paperweights holding things in, separating out dovetails. I, I use these quite a bit. And the nice thing is they're perfect 90 degrees. So if I'm trying a square, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> I could check it with that. These are kind of useful for that. Sometimes I'm putting in boxes. What I can do is in the corner, I can put this in and I can clamp to this side and clamp to this side and I can clamp my walls square with one of these. They just have a lot of really good uses. So in general, I do often use them like a square for checking inside corners. I also have this one from DFM Toolworks. It doesn't get used as much for a square, but every now and then I want to pull it out and check it and it's really nice for being able to get into corners and things of that nature. So this is on my list because it's something I pull out from time to time. It's got some specific uses. Plus, with these pins you can put in here, you can put a mechanical pencil in the middle and it becomes a center finder to find and mark the center of your board. Having a tool that you know and can trust, it is an amazing mind saver in the game of woodworking. It is just really, really peaceful to have something you can put on the board and just know that it's correct. And having a good tri-square that can do it right every time is one of those things that I take a lot of pleasure in. I really enjoy that. Now, everyone's a little bit different. Everyone has a different series of tools that they use in their shop and different people make different projects and different projects will use a different series of tools at different times. And so it's one of those things that's kind of fun because everyone can do things in their own way. Yes, you could even be one of those people who like using these things. I don't know why, but it's still okay. So have some fun in the shop. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What is your favorite square-ish thing in the tool? What is your favorite thing to use in the shop? Let me know that down below. Thank you. Commenting down helps. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas as well, or even snide remarks, or tell me why I'm wrong and why I should be using a combination square. I would love to hear that. Please throw those down below because it helps out the channel. But if you really want to be amazing, you want to be beautiful, benevolent, gorgeous, and one of those people we all look up to and want to be someday, then think about joining these people over here. Those are some of the patrons on Patreon. And between patrons and members, uh, those are the people who've clicked the join button down below or hit the thank you button. Thank you. You guys keep us going. You allow this content to happen and I don't have to be sponsored by any particular tool. I get to say what I want to say rather than what the combination square, square company wants me to say. I hope you like that, and if you do, then think about becoming a member or a patron. I think I'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. I've been told by a few people that I'm a bit of a square, but I, I, I haven't found where. Not even my shoulders, huh? Square?